Did you know that 1 in 23 men and 1 in 25 women are at risk of developing colon cancer? It is one of the most diagnosed cancers in the world. Hi, I am V and welcome to the best health channel on YouTube where we talk about everything related to health. Before we talk about what colon cancer is, we need to know the anatomy of the colon and where it is located in the body. The colon, also known as the large intestine, is a vital part of the digestive system. It plays a key role in absorbing water and electrolytes from digested food and processing waste material. It is a muscular structure about 5 feet long in adults, and yes, it is that long. It forms an inverted U-shape that frames the small intestine and is divided into several sections. The sections include the cecum which is very close to the appendix and ileum, as a small part of the small intestine that connects to the large intestine. The ascending colon which is at the right side of the abdominal cavity. The transverse colon which runs from the right to the left part of the abdominal wall. The descending colon on the left which stores feces. Below it is the sigmoid colon which is S-shaped and connects to the rectum and anus. Cancer can occur at any part of the mentioned parts or all of them. Now that we know the anatomy, we can talk about what colorectal cancer is. Colorectal cancer, commonly referred to as colon or rectal cancer depending on its location, is a type of cancer that develops in the colon, the longest part of the large intestine, or the rectum, the last several inches of the large intestine before the anus. The cancer typically begins as a growth on the inner lining of the colon or rectum, known as a polyp. Not all polyps are cancerous, but certain types, such as adenomatous polyps, can transform into cancer over time. The process of cancer development from polyps is often slow, taking several years. What about the risk factors and causes? Colorectal cancer, like many cancers, arises from a combination of genetic, environmental, and lifestyle factors. While the exact cause of each case can be difficult to determine, several risk factors have been identified. Age. The risk of colorectal cancer increases with age. Most people diagnosed with this cancer are over the age of 50. Personal and family medical history. Previous colorectal cancer or polyps. Individuals who have previously had colorectal cancer or adenomatous polyps are at higher risk of developing new cancers in other areas of the colon and rectum. Family history of colorectal cancer or polyps. The risk is higher if a close relative, parent, sibling, or child, has had colorectal cancer or adenomatous polyps, particularly if they were diagnosed at a young age. Genetic syndromes. About 5-10% of colorectal cancers are due to inherited genetic mutations. The most common syndromes are hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer, HNPCC, also known as Lynch syndrome, familial adenomatous polyposis, FAP, a condition causing numerous polyps in the colon and rectum. Ethnicity and race. African Americans have the highest colorectal cancer incidence and mortality rates of all racial groups in the United States. Ashkenazi Jews also have a higher risk. Diet. A diet high in red and processed meats can increase the risk of colorectal cancer. Diets high in vegetables, fruits, and whole grains have been linked to a decreased risk. Lifestyle factors. Physical inactivity. A sedentary lifestyle can increase the risk of colorectal cancer. Obesity. Being overweight or obese increases the risk, especially in men. Long-term smokers are more likely than non-smokers to develop and die from colorectal cancer. Heavy alcohol use can increase the risk. Type 2 diabetes. People with type 2 diabetes have an increased risk of colorectal cancer. Inflammatory bowel disease, IBD. Chronic inflammatory conditions of the colon, such as ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, can increase the risk. Radiation therapy for cancer. Radiation therapy directed at the abdomen to treat previous cancers increases the risk of colorectal cancer. Geographical variations. Higher rates of colorectal cancer are found in North America, Europe, and parts of Asia, like Japan, while lower rates are typically seen in Africa and South Central Asia. These variations may be attributed to differences in dietary habits, lifestyle factors, genetic predisposition, and access to healthcare services, including screening and treatment facilities. Survival rates. Survival rates for colorectal cancer vary significantly based on the stage at diagnosis. 
Early stage cancers, localized to the colon or rectum, have a high 5-year survival rate, whereas later stage cancers, with distant metastasis, have significantly lower survival rates. Improvements in treatment and early detection have led to overall increased survival rates in recent decades. Now, I will explain the signs and symptoms and why they happen. Colorectal cancer can lead to a variety of symptoms, with the underlying mechanisms often tied to the location of the tumor, its size, and how far it has spread, metastasized. Here's an explanation of common symptoms and their causes. 1. Abdominal pain. This is the most common and earliest symptom and it is usually caused by the tumor growing and invading surrounding tissues or organs. Inflammation and ulceration at the tumor site can also lead to discomfort or pain. 2. Changes in bowel habits. This is usually occurs when the cancer interfere with the function of the colon which is water and electrolyte absorption. This is usually common with cancer of the left or descending colon with diarrhea and constipation in alternation. Or a change in stool consistency can occur if the tumor obstructs or narrows the bowel, altering bowel motility and function. There is also change in stool shape known as pencil stool, when the stool is so thin. 3. Fatigue can be a result of cancer itself as it diverts the body's resources, or due to blood loss leading to anemia, a decrease in red blood cells, which reduces oxygen transport to tissues. 4. Unintended weight loss. Cancer cells require a lot of energy, which they divert from normal bodily processes. Additionally, a tumor in the bowel can affect the body's ability to absorb nutrients and can also cause anorexia. 5. Bleeding occurs when the tumor invades blood vessels and is usually common with left colon cancer, leading to blood in the stool which can be in the form of melena dark stool. Rectal bleeding is more common with rectal cancer, but bleeding can occur with colon cancer too. 6. Anemia. Often results from chronic, unnoticed bleeding leading to iron deficiency. As red blood cell count decreases, symptoms like fatigue, weakness, and shortness of breath can occur. 7. Large bowel obstructions. Tumors in the colon can grow large enough to block the passage of stool, causing abdominal pain, constipation, and bloating. 8. Nausea and vomiting. These can be caused by bowel obstruction. When the intestine is blocked, food, fluids, and gas build up behind the blockage, causing these symptoms. 9. Abdominal distension can be due to a bowel obstruction or a buildup of fluid in the abdomen, ascites, often in more advanced stages of cancer or in metastasis when the cancers invade the lungs. 10. Tenesmus. This is a sensation of incomplete evacuation after a bowel movement. It can occur when a rectal tumor creates a constant urge to defecate due to its presence and irritation of the rectal lining. 11. Metastasis. When cancer spreads to other parts of the body, like the liver or lungs, it can cause symptoms related to the affected organ, such as jaundice, yellowing of the skin and eyes, if it spreads to the liver, or shortness of breath if it spreads to the lungs. It's important to note that these symptoms are not exclusive to colorectal cancer and can be caused by other conditions but it is mostly colon or rectal cancer when the patient is over 50 years of age. However, persistent symptoms warrant medical evaluation to determine the underlying cause. Early detection of colorectal cancer significantly improves treatment outcomes. I hope this video taught you something about your health. Remember to be kind to your body so that it can be kind to you. If you notice any weird symptoms, please go get it checked before it turns into something big. Thank you for tuning in today and watching this video to the end. If you are new to my channel and interested in more videos like this, please like and subscribe. I wish you all a very beautiful day and a healthy life and see you in my next video.